Hey, what's up, guys? I am Joe from Workbench, and this week we're going to talk about tracking people. Faces. Tracking faces. Cut that. This week we're going to be making something like this. With all these boxes and everything, track to a face. Before we get started, this is highly dependent upon the footage that you're going to use. But if you'd like to get a jump start, the project file for this is available on our website. It contains pretty much everything that you can see in this tutorial. So first, let's look at how we actually track a face. It's kind of an odd process, but basically you select your layer, you grab your Gen tool with G, and then you click a mask around a face to track. And make sure that you get your mask absolutely perfect like I did here. All right, then we're going to open up our mask over here. Click on that mask, right click, hit track mask. And I'll bring up our tracker somewhere on your screen. And I'd like to track points in the face because we're going to attach stuff to it. So I'm going to select face tracking with detailed features. I'm going to track backwards. And it's going to take a second. I'm going to drink some water and speed this up. We're going to go back here and we're going to track forward. And that's as far as I need. Let me get rid of this mask. And what's nice about these actual track points, you get them in comp space. So you can just make like a new null, which I have a little script I'm working on to make a null of shapes. And we click up here and we're going to open up nose tip. Click on that guy, copy those frames, open up position on here, paste them in. And let's make sure that these keyframes are actually pasted at the very beginning of all of our tracking frames. And there we go. We have a null that follows the nose. So that's how I built the null in this comp. So let's turn off all of these layers. We can go through this one by one. So first we have the footage layer. And it just has the track points from my previous track. I've got the face null, which you don't really need to have on, but you can see it if this thing wouldn't shut itself off constantly. And then we're going to click on Minimax. So almost all of the layers on up are adjustment layers. Well, they're actually shapes that I've turned into adjustment layers, but they function the same way. So this layer is actually luma matted out with a JS classic layer that I made in JS placement. And both of these are attached to that face null, so they move together. And that's going to give us patches that are tracked to the face that our minimax and our levels will apply to. So what's really interesting about this is that I set up the minimax effect to work only on the red channel. And what's cool about that is that we're gonna use the fine edges later, and we're gonna be able to tone down the rest of that graininess that you usually get from it by turning off or really lowering the blue and green channels. So you see here, I have my radius set to 26. I have this set to maximum the minimum, but it could just be maximum. That just really will expand these things out past the edges, which might be what you're looking for. Then in levels, I have red crushed down. So this part's a little bit brighter. Otherwise, it's pretty dim. So then we have that JS classic layer I've talked about before. And then you notice here I have set channels. If we turn this on, you really can't get an idea of what that looks like until we turn the edges on. But let's just go over the effect quickly. I have set channels on here. I'm setting it to use its own red. And I have green set to off and blue set to off. Then I also have opacity set to 55%. You can adjust this to change how much of the grittiness you want in between the lines that we get from find edges. So let's turn on our edges layer. We have find edges here, and then we have tint, and then levels set to brighten everything up, and then I have invert turned on. So if we change this down to like zero, you can see how much grainier it is. If we go all the way to 100, you can see that almost all of the face goes away. So it's just something you have to mess with with your footage. Obviously, depending on how you light it or what your source material is, you'll get different effects. So like here, my beard kind of disappears but I didn't really mind that, so I kind of left it. You can also try to like adjust your base layers so that things are a little bit brighter, but I didn't feel that was necessary here. Then I have this displacement adjustment layer with a few masks on it. And for the displacement layer, I'm using another JS Classic of the same type on the very bottom. This layer is huge and I didn't really want to pre-comp it. And since it's a raster image, I can't do continuously rasterize, but I wanted to be able to scale it down and move it around. So as a little trick, I threw in a transform effect. Because if you notice in displacement, we can actually set this to use effects and masks. So we can transform with an effect instead of using the actual layer transform controls. And then the displacement will actually see how this is moved. So I scaled it down to 32%, which is about what the other one is scaled to. And then the position is all crazy because it's like an 8K file. So I couldn't exactly copy that nose tip there. And parenting that to the face null won't be seen by the displacement either. So I just copy those position keyframes into the position of the transform effect instead. And those are going to give you just the 9, 22, whatever, which is going to move this thing to a completely different location. So I just put a quick expression in here, and it's just value minus 960, 540, which is the middle point for that face null, plus 4096, 4096, 
because that was the original position of this transform effect. So basically we're zeroing out our original position to just get a slight offset of how much that moves from the center point and then adding back in the original position. So it'll track back with the face. Then in our next layer, we have crush and that's just the levels to bring everything back down. I had an invert on here at some point, but I don't need that. Then I made this thing yellow because I was trying out a bunch of stuff and I left it in here because it kind of works with a tint later on. Our next layer is a mosaic and it's set to color dodge. And that basically takes the same thing and just blocks it up on top of itself which gave us these kind of like cool blocks off to the side. I set the horizontal blocks low at 100 and the vertical blocks kind of high at 1000 and click sharp colors and that was it. Then I wanted to add a little bit more to the face back in. So I duplicated the footage to the top, set it to add, ran another find edges on it and tinted it back to gray. I almost left it there, but at some point I kind of desaturated everything and I like that a lot better. So I went with that. And then since we had that null tracker, I threw in a couple of X's, some text on this thing and called it a day. And that displacement gets us all sorts of neat little things like this little piece over here that kind of glitches off to the side and these black spots. So you can add more of that if that's what you want. And I also made this other version where everything draws on, which is pretty interesting. And it might be something that you want to play with. Anything that'll adjust the contrast of the image will make a different texture. And these two are in the project file along with some weird extra thing that I did at the beginning when I was starting out on this effect. All right, so that is pretty much it. I hope that was illuminating for you. If you have any comments or questions, leave them in the comments down below. And if you like this video, make sure to subscribe because we do one every week. If you'd like to help support what we do, check out patreon.com slash workbench and make sure you keep up with the blog at workbench.tv. And as always, I am Joe and I'll see you next week. Bye. I know you're watching, James.